What is up there, ladies and gentlemen? Thanks for checking out Shinsen88 Gaming. So, if you've been with the channel a long time, and I really mean a long time, like an insanely long time, like way back when I first started the channel, I did a video on this game. Back then, I didn't really know what I was doing. I also didn't have very good equipment, so the, the mic quality was wonderful. Um, and uh, I did a little brief video on this game. Uh, it had a few factual errors in it, and just I didn't, you know, like I said, know what I was doing. Uh, but then there wasn't really much available on this game at the time. So anyways, I kind of did the video on it, forgot about it, and uh, haven't revisited it since. Well, I recently got a request to, in fact, revisit it. So here we are. This is Lucky Star No Mori, or Lucky Star No Mori, I guess. These, uh, well, we'll get into what they are. But before we do, this video is going to be in two parts. First, there's going to be an introduction, sort of what this game is, how you can play it, and that sort of thing. And then I actually have put together a little guide documenting how to get all of the various items that you can get throughout the game. Uh, we're just going to run some B-roll, basically here, although the entire game is sort of B-roll <laughs> in a way. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into uh, what it is. And if you're interested in this game, I am also going to be uploading a full playthrough with no commentary. I say full playthrough, but that's getting all the items and basically 100%ing the game, I guess. Uh, so it actually took me uh, almost three hours, I think, to do everything, which comes down to one of the biggest faults of the game, but we'll get into that later. So anyways, what is Lucky Star No Mori? Well, it's actually a game that has not that much info about it, but the best that I have been able to figure out is these were sort of little bonus CD-ROMs that were included with the Lucky Star DVD volumes in Japan. Because there were 12 Lucky Star volumes, there were in fact 12 of these games available. I am actually not planning to check out any of the other ones, just this one. Uh, not that these aren't enjoyable, but I, I don't want to invest that sort of time into solving or completing all the rest of them. However, there is good news for you, because all of these, all 12, have been uploaded to archive.org, and a simple Google search will get you there. I'm not going to link it, just in case. Um, just know they will work without install. You just download them and open them. But in order to get the Japanese text to work properly, I did have to change my system language to JP. Easy to do. No, like, permanent impact. You can change it back and forth at any time. Again, won't be covering it here, but Google will, uh, will get you there. So, I did want to really briefly give a shout-out to another YouTube channel. This is not somebody I know, but just somebody that I found while doing research. That would be Timepiece Master, and the best way to describe this is Timepiece Master walked so I could run. <laughs> um, you should definitely check out this channel. Uh, I'll link it in the description. Basically, Timepiece Master, who I believe is a he, um, so he does translations of various games. A big Lucky Star fan, apparently. I'm a moderate Lucky Star fan, I guess. I watched it back in the day, but I haven't thought about it in quite a long time until doing this video. Um, but he did a video on this game back in June that I referred to heavily when doing my video on it. So definitely check out him, Timepiece Master. Link in the description. So anyways, now that we're a few minutes in, what is this game exactly? Well, Lucky Star No Mori is not exactly a game per se. And in fact, you're watching just some unedited footage of my, my playthrough here. It's not really a game that you're intended to sit there and engage with, I don't think. Rather, I think this is sort of more of a run in the background and click it every once in a while. So if you were sitting there working on a, I don't know, a paper or something, and you just kind of had this run in to keep you company, I think that's sort of what the point would be. There's not any real direct control of anything that happens. There are limited sorts of interactions that can happen. And mostly you're just kind of clicking on things and seeing if anything happens. So it's not even really a point and click where you're directly controlling the action and what you do. Sometimes you just click things, stuff happens. Sometimes you click things, stuff doesn't happen. And sometimes you just sit there and watch. So basically what you do is you follow Konata around her day. 
This includes at home, at school, and walking to and from school, which we'll get into. Um, you do interact with a lot of the other characters from Lucky Star, at least the main ones, um, like your main friend group. I don't know if they got into all the other characters in the other games, but that might be worth checking out, like side characters and such. Um, as you click through items, sometimes you can, or click through prompts rather, and interactions, sometimes you'll get items that you can equip for mini games. There's the, the famous Choco Cornet. Still never figured out which direction to eat it from. I've actually never had one. It looks pretty good. I should, I should look into this at some point. But anyways, um, that's pretty much it. You, you watch the game go. You click things every once in a while. Sometimes you'll get an item. You'll see that there are various different sort of settings that you can go into. There's Konata's room. There's the school. There's the uh, Iragis, I believe is their last name. Their household. Um, Kagami and Tsukasa. There is the limit room, and then there's the long journey to and from the house. But along the way, you're going to see Konata do various things like gaming, watching anime, gaming, reading manga, gaming, and uh, occasionally gaming as well. So that's pretty much what the game has to offer you. I think that if you are into Lucky Star, then you're probably going to want to check it out. If you're not into Lucky Star, you're probably not going to want to. So now let's talk about the biggest flaw of the game. This right here is a sequence of Konata going to school. So you get dressed in your school uniform. You're going to walk across the floor very slowly. Very slowly. And grab your book bag. Mm hmm. Then you're going to walk back very slowly. Mm hmm. Uh huh. And now we begin the process of journeying to school. So I will say this, I actually do think that the, the world design here looks pretty nice. And in fact, the graphics generally, they're incredibly simple, low poly, but they get the job done. And I think they're pleasant. They're colorful while not being overly cartoony. And uh, generally, like I said, just kind of pleasant to look at. What this could really benefit from, however, is a speed up button. But the fact that we don't have one kind of, again, lends credence to my claim or my thought process that this is meant to sort of just be played in the background or have it run in the background while you do other things. Because we're not even halfway done here. Oh no, we have to get on the bus. All right, there's the bus. And now the bus is going to drive us to school. Yeah, so this is sort of what you're going to be doing about half the time. In fact, while recording, uh, it was unfortunate. There were a couple times where I either missed a prompt or a random event didn't trigger that day, and I had to wait basically 20 minutes to get another shot at that. So if I had had a perfect run, I mean, you probably could get everything within, I don't know, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but it took me like almost three, like I said. <laughs> so that's a bit of a bummer. I think you just have to be aware of that and go into this game knowing that that's the case. But again, like seeing this for the first time, it's kind of cool. But when you have to watch it every single day cycle, it, it gets a little irritating. I do have to say, though, the way that the bus turns, uh, turns is hilarious. It's just like 90 degree angle shift. Very impressive uh, school bus. Maybe that's just how it is in Japan. I don't know. Anyways, we have finally made it. And into the school we go. So anyways, everybody, that's pretty much what there is to say about Lucky Star No Mori. If you are interested, you can check it out uh, at archive.org. Do check out Time Peace Master. We are going to actually, in a second here, jump into the second part of the video. That's going to show you how to get all of the items. But look at that. We made it to school. So uh, if 
that is what you were kind of interested in, the first impressions and how to play it. I will see you on the next video. However, we will jump into how to actually get all of the various items. Hello? Never mind. Back to reading. Yeah, let's do that. You said it, Konata. All right, let us hop right into it. To get our first item, we're going to simply click the desk while Konata is asleep. We get a little Doraemon cameo, and that will get you the glasses. One of several pairs of glasses in the game, in fact. By the way, worth noting that we're not going in order of, like, item one to however many there are, just in the order that I got them. Number two, you're going to get this special event on day two, where you get access to this little Game & Watch style Lucky Channel game. You can actually play this at any time, but this is a special event version where you are tasked with scoring 500 points. Like most other things in this game, it moves rather slowly. So, we're gonna go ahead and do a jump cut. Whoa. The uh, regular version of this goes endlessly. I went to a thousand and then stopped. I think Timepiece Master got to like 2,500 though, which is pretty good. This is going to get you a cool little interview with uh, Lucky Channel characters. It's actually pretty long, and again, Timepiece Master has a translation of the whole thing on his channel. Alright, next item. In order to trigger this one, you're going to want to be at school. You're going to click on Miyuki, get her to leave. We're going to speed that up. Then you're going to click on the door. And then you're going to get actually access to a second minigame. Basically, uh, Miyuki needs to get her glasses, Velma style. The controls here are a little weird. Um, you basically move the mouse to the left and the right, and she will sort of try to move in that direction. If you hit an object, you have accident, <laughs> in all lowercase. You have an accident, you fall down and uh, you keep going. Fortunately, even though the controls are a little wonky, you got plenty of time to actually reach the goal. And reaching the goal will not only unlock the minigame, or you might unlock the minigame just by accessing it, but it will actually get you the item that you need. But as you can see, plenty of time to spare. And actually, because she was turned the other way, did she have her glasses on the whole time? I bet she did. We won't worry about that. Alright, the next one actually just triggers through a random event. Um, Konata is going to fall asleep in class. And Nanako-sensei, best girl question mark, is going to forcefully wake you up using a fan. A Harisen. Nice. Now this one, unlike some of the other items, is not actually equipable. It just sits in the back of the room, and you can click on it to get a little sort of humorous interaction, I guess. After, of course, you very slowly walk over to it. Nice. All right, next one. While you are sitting at the computer, occasionally when you click on the door, you will get Bontakun from Full Metal Panic. Actually, another one that I haven't watched everything of it. I've I watched some of the anime and I read the whole manga, but yeah, I need to check that one out. I, I remember liking it. This is taking me back in time. So this one, like the Harisen, is actually not an equipable item. You'll just see he kind of sits over there by Konata's bed. And that's pretty much it. Alright, the next one you're going to get when you trigger the event where your friends come over. This one I actually received at the end of the day, so you might have to mess with it a little bit. But when they left... Jane, indeed. I actually got the item. Which was 
ribbon number one. Actually, Tsukasa's ribbon. Next item, occasionally when you click on the door while sitting at the table, I think you have to be sitting at the table, I could be wrong, you will make the journey over to the uh, friend's house, Kagami and Tsukasa's house. We're going to speed this one up for you. And if you happen to get the event, there's Bontakun again. If you happen to get the event where Kagami is asleep, then that is how you get this one. If you don't get it, then you just got to basically roll it again the next day. And we're going to pull a dastardly pl uh, prank or, or something, I guess. Hmm. What should I do? It is uh, cool, I guess, neat that they did model all the characters with like different outfits and hairstyles and such. I mean, it's not like there was a ton of effort put into this game. It is just a DVD extra after all. But it's little touches like that that make it worth it, I guess. Anyways, that is going to get us the second ribbon, which is actually Kagami's ribbon. All right, to get the next item, you have to have your friends over again. You're going to click on uh, Tsukasa, and she's going to go check out your bookshelf. And I believe find something that, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah, it says. <laughs> that will, in fact, get you ribbon number three. Which, according to the text, is also Tsukasa's ribbon. Alright, next one. While you're in the living room, occasionally you can click on Konata, get her to fall asleep. Dear old dad will come in. I believe his name was Sochiro, but I can't remember for sure. He wakes you up. You will get perhaps the most important item. Again, though, we gotta wait for a long time for this to go through. But it will give you perhaps the most important item, that being the sunglasses. Oh yeah. And finally, while at the Hiragi's house, if you click Kagami, you can get this little interaction where she's eating Pocky. And uh, Monata says something defective, you're always eating Pocky. And that will unlock the Pocky, which you hold in your mouth, which is kind of kind of endearing. And that's about it. So, in conclusion, Lucky Star No Mori. Is it a game? M mostly. Should you check it out? Maybe. If you like Lucky Star, definitely give it a look. I mean, it's, it's very easy to get running. You probably can mess around with it for a few minutes and feel like you haven't really wasted your time. I don't know that I would necessarily go for 100% items, but hey. Now you can. Um, that's about all I got for you today. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little look, again, at Lucky Star No Mori. If you do have any other weird, obscure games that you'd like me to check out, I can give them a shot if I think I can. Uh, no guarantees, though. But uh, anyways, I want to thank you very much for watching this one. Thanks for requesting this one. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and make our exit here. Until next time, everybody. Thanks for checking out Shinsen 88 Gaming. Take care, God bless, and Godspeed Konata.